Last year's horror film, Hereditary, quickly became my favourite post-millennium horror film. And I'm now about to go and see the next film by the same director, Ari Aster. Can this film possibly live up to that ludicrously scary and deranged debut? Let's find out. Hello beautiful, I'm Jason Arnold, the author of The Last Days of Jack Sparks and Ghoster. If you're new here, you might want to hit subscribe down there, or maybe hit like, or just wait to see if you like the video or not. So the film I'm about to see is called Midsummer, with an A, Midsummer, and so I'm hoping that that means that the audience in this cinema believe it to be an art house movie, and so hopefully that will weed out any dickheads who might otherwise have sat there talking and using their phone every five minutes. I haven't been to see a horror movie, I'm not even sure if this is a horror movie to be honest, but I haven't been to see a horror movie for like the last two or three years at the cinema because it's just too annoying. People are annoying. So I'm really hoping that in a small cinema like this, the Duke's Picture House in Comedia, that uh, it'll be a much more pleasurable experience than perhaps a, a chain cinema. But let's see. I should probably do a second video on why I loved Hereditary so much and how it made me afraid to go to the bathroom at 3 a.m. the night after I watched it. Literally, that's what happened. How cool is that? I love being scared by horror films and it really doesn't happen enough. So that's why I'm so keen to see Ari Aster's new film. I haven't even watched the trailer for Midsummer because I don't tend to watch trailers for movies if I really want to see them. Especially because in the world of horror, all that fear and all that shock value lies in the unknown. And a lot of that gets dissipated when you see a trailer first. That even happened for me with Hereditary, and so I'm not going to let that happen again. I've just seen a few things saying that Midsummer is really freaky and, and mad, and yeah, sounds good to me. That's all I need to know. To be honest, I feel quite nervous, because what if it isn't as good as Hereditary. I think I have to manage my expectations because it doesn't look like it's going to be another Hereditary. It's certainly not Hereditary 2. Otherwise, I suppose it would be called, well, Hereditary 2, wouldn't it? So I'm not expecting a supernatural horror film. I've got no idea if there's even anything supernatural in it. But I do know that Ari Aster is incredibly talented and so I have faith in him and I can't wait to see what he's done here. Okay, I think that's about it. I'll tell you what I think of the film. I'll try and get out. Well now, that was a wonderful experience. And I can definitely say, no spoilers for me, but it's every bit as deranged as Hereditary. In fact, it's madder than Hereditary, I would say. Yeah, that was a pretty mad film. Long, at two and a half hours. And there were times when I thought, this feels maybe a bit too long, but when I think back, and two and a half hours actually makes it quite a nicely immersive experience. It's not scary in the same way that Hereditary was, so don't expect much of that. But what it is, is freaky, disturbing, funny. It made me feel anxious in a really weird way. Just to describe it in a really simplistic way, I would say it's like The Wicker Man meets The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. With maybe a side order of Monty Python without it being obvious about that at all. I mean, it's not really Python-like, but there is an undercurrent of pretty strong comedy there, even though there are only a few moments where the film seems to really go for a big laugh, you know, so it's not, it's not a comedy. If it is, then it's a pretty, it's a pretty dark one. <laughs> I'm gonna go home now, because it's about midnight or something, because that was a pretty long film, and I'll put some more thoughts together tomorrow. Okay, so it's obviously the next day and I am still feeling very happy about Midsummer. Yeah, it didn't make me afraid while going to the bathroom in the middle of the night in the same way that Hereditary did, uh, but I didn't expect that to happen to be honest and that's fine. But it was and it is a hell of a movie, yeah. it's. Uh, I love that it's completely different from Hereditary and yet you can feel that it's an Ari Aster film. There's definitely, there are definitely hallmarks that are making their presence felt, such as, for instance, making nudity scary. I'm not quite sure how he manages to do that. That's quite weird, isn't it? <laughs>
Yeah, for me, Ariasta is the perfect collision of old school and new school horror directing. He is such a classy and gifted craftsman, but you know that in his heart, his heart just beats pure horror. There's a real cold ruthlessness to what he does. And I love that he's, for all the subtle, beautiful, and this is a beautiful film, by the way, I haven't mentioned that yet. It just looks gorgeous, absolutely sumptuous, in a way that horror films just generally don't. You know, most of it, it takes place in Sweden, so most of it, seems to happen during the day when everything just looks sunny and, and gorgeous. Anyway, for all of those things, the classiness, the gorgeousness, and the subtlety, I love that Ari Aster is not above hitting us with a shock shot, like punching us in the face with stuff, like he did in Hereditary. That's definitely a hallmark I've noticed. He loves those slam bang shots that make you go, Jesus. And you know, I'm a big fan of that, big fan. I'm also really happy about my cinema experience. This was my first time going to see a new film at the cinema in maybe, I don't know, three years or something like that because I just got so fed up with people at cinemas. So maybe I should stop going to the bigger chains and stick to the smaller places like the Duke's uh, Picture House, I think it's called, at Comedia. It was a great experience. There was The place was pretty much full. There was popcorn and stuff, you know, there was younger people there, older people, but there was no, I didn't see a single phone screen light up and I didn't hear any chatter really, just the odd murmur, that's fine. <laughs> so I'm happy about that and maybe I'll be able to go to the cinema again. Wow, amazing. So yeah, Midsummer. Regardless of whether you like Hereditary or not, if you like freaky, non-conformist, bizarre, disturbing and occasionally shocking films, then you should see Midsummer. That's my spoiler-free review. And now, of course, I would really like to hear from you. If you've seen Midsummer, what did you think of it? Tell me in comments down there. I think it's pretty hard to police spoilers in YouTube comments, so we may as well declare comments a spoiler zone. So say whatever you like. Talk about the ending if you like. Tell me what you thought the ending meant. That should be interesting. If you've enjoyed this video, then don't forget to hit like and maybe subscribe if you'd like to see more. I don't tend to specialize in film reviews on this channel, but I will do some more, I'm sure. This channel is generally about retro flavored stuff like old school horror, VHS, retro video games, and Doctor Who, stuff like that. Speaking of Doctor Who, this weekend, if you're a Doctor Who fan, definitely subscribe because I'm gonna be doing some stuff about the new season 10 Doctor Who Blu-ray box set and that starts at midnight on Sunday, i.e. the point where Sunday becomes Monday. It does get a bit confusing when you start talking about midnights, doesn't it? So yeah, look out for some new stuff about that Blu-ray set, that John Pertwee set, and about specifically about one of the documentaries, the biggest documentary on that whole set. All right then, I'll see you on Sunday, and until then, embrace your obsessions. So this is something here that's always here that